the other day, I think yesterday, I received an email from one of my subscribers uh, about a topic I think is very interesting. Um, in the New Testament, you find a lot of Old Testament quotes, particularly in the Gospels. And what you'll notice is that a lot of these quotes, if you look at them, the English phraseology doesn't even remotely relate sometimes to the Old Testament quote. Like, for instance, um, in Acts 15, 17, uh, it quotes Amos 9, 12. And if you actually look at the Old Testament in the King James Version, for instance, and you read Amos 9, 12, and then you read the quote of Amos 9, 12 in Acts 15, 17, they don't read the same. Now, what is the reason for this? Actually, I mentioned it in other videos, and I, I did do one video that covered this a little bit once. Uh, what it is is that the Protestant Bible uses the Hebrew Tanakh for its Old Testament. The apostles and those who wrote the New Testament used the Septuagint, the Greek Septuagint Old Testament, when quoting the Old Testament in the New Testament. Now, the Hebrew Tanakh obviously is written in Hebrew, and that's the Hebrew Old Testament. And then you have the Greek New Testament, right? And the apostles were using the Greek Septuagint, while all the Protestants today use the Hebrew Tanakh. So you might wonder, wonder to yourself, why is it that people today don't use the Greek Septuagint? Now, I read the early church fathers, and the early church fathers indicated the reason why there's such a difference between the Hebrew Tanakh and the Greek Septuagint is because a pharisaical council at Council of Jamnia in AD 90, 30, 60 years after Jesus ascended into the clouds, this council met because they were having problems with Christians converting, converting Jews to Christianity. And they were using the Greek Septuagint to prove Jesus was the, indeed the Messiah. These Pharisees didn't like it. And what they did is they removed certain books from the Hebrew Tanakh. Okay. And actually we have tangible proof today that this did occur. Besides the fact that the early church fathers say this, like Justin the Martyr. Um, they actually not only removed certain books, they even changed the wording a bit. Just a little bit. Not enough to really for a lot of people to notice, but just enough to make it sound different. A little bit different. And you'll see that with the English, if you look at the English in your Old Testament. So in other words, what I'm saying is, they used the Hebrew Tanakh for your Old Testament in most of your Protestant Bibles. And it's not even accurate fully. Uh, and when I say that, what I mean is they tried to put theology in through different, uh, they have these, uh, I'm trying to think of what the right word is for it. Actually, I just looked it up to confirm what I was thinking. Uh, and I was right. It's Hebrew accent marks. They actually put these marks into the text. They weren't there before. Okay. And in reality, what they're doing with these accent marks is they're actually controlling theology. They're actually making the Bible read a certain way with these accent marks. And today, the way Christians do it is they translate it from the Greek to the English, or the Hebrew to the English, with their theological slant, so that it reads the way they want it to read, with their theology. And again, there was three schools of theology in the early church, okay? And the Roman Latin one won out. A lot of Protestant dogma, and Catholic dogma, of course, as well, is based off this Western school of thought. Now, another thing, and here's the proof that they actually messed with it. The Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls don't agree. The Hebrew Dead Sea Scrolls don't exactly agree with the Hebrew Tanakh. They actually agree more, agree more with the Greek Septuagint. Again, the Greek Septuagint is who, what the apostles used when they quoted the Old Testament in the New Testament. According to the early fathers, Jesus was familiar with the Septuagint. The apostles were familiar with the Septuagint. Because Greek was a common language back then, Jesus must have spoke a little bit of Greek. Okay? Other, besides other languages he might have spoke. Now, in America, we just speak English usually. But if you go anywhere else in the world, they usually speak more than one language. We're just a little bit different here. Okay, now, uh, another thing I wanted to mention is the Greek Septuagint was around for 270 years before Christ came. 
it had been well accepted for over uh, over 200 years already accepted for a long period of time by the Jewish religion those who were in control of the Jewish religion the Sanhedrin the Pharisees Sadducees Essenes whatever they basically accepted the Septuagint now of course the Sadducees only accepted the books of Moses I understand that but they were a little bit off anyways they didn't accept the Pharisees accepted the Greek Septuagint now I've even got to some of the quotes but I was going to go over some of the quotes real quick here um, let's see okay here's the Acts 15 17 verse New Testament King James Version that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called saith the Lord who doeth all things now here's the same this is a quote from Amos 9 12 that I just read in the New Testament now let's read Amos 9 12 in the King James Bible the same Bible I just wrote, read that out of that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all and of all the heathen which are called by my name say saith the Lord that doeth this okay here's the main difference it says here in Amos 9 12 in, in the Old Testament King James remnant of Eden Edom remnant of Edom and it doesn't say that in Acts 15 17 it says residue of men it doesn't say Edom it says all men see that's like actually a big difference okay that's just one okay there's like a lot of these um, actually let's see here let's see what other ones he has here okay I'm gonna just read a little bit of this commentary on the verses I just read rather than telling us the remnant of Israelites will seek the Lord along with all the Gentiles upon whom the name of the Lord is called as the New Testament quotes it Amos in Amos 9 12 in the uh, Amos 9 12 in the KJV would have us to believe that the Jews will possess the remnant of Edom and all and of all the heathen so in other words instead of uh, instead of them seeking God Israel uh, the Israelites will will possess them that's kind of twisted okay and then let's see here here's another thing he says here while doing some digging on the subject I learned that the New Testament as a general rule rule agrees with the Septuagint more frequently than with the Masoretic text but the Old Testament that I was using, the King James Version, was translated using the Masoretic text rather than the Septuagint. I also learned that the Septuagint is more closely aligned with the biblical manuscripts from found in the Dead Sea Scrolls as well. And the Dead Sea Scrolls date back to the 2nd century B.C., well before the New Testament was written. As Wikipedia puts it, some of the, some of the Dead Sea Scrolls attest to Hebrew texts other than those on which... The Masoretic text was based. In many cases, these newly found texts accord with the Septuagint version. So not only does the Masoretic text conflict with the Septuagint in the New Testament, but it even conflicts with the Dead Sea Scrolls, which predate the oldest manuscripts of the Masoretic text by almost 1,000 years. It should not be surprising to learn that the Dead Sea Scrolls indicate the existence of Hebrew texts of the Old Testament other than the Masoretic text, firstly because the Dead Sea Scrolls predate the Masoretic text by 1,000 years and secondly because the Masoretic text was redacted by the Maser Maserites who of course rejected Jesus as a Messiah okay Wikipedia's article on the Masoretic text has this to say the MT was primarily copied edited and distributed by a group of Jews known as the Maserites between the 7th and 10th centuries common era it was numerous it has numerous differences of both greater and lesser significance when compared to extant fourth century manuscripts of the Greek translation made in the third and second centuries uh, common era of the Hebrew scriptures that was popular used in Egypt Palestine and that is often quoted in the Christian New Testament so in other words there is a big difference and it, why did the Protestants uh, go with this uh, Hebrew Masoretic text over the Greek Septuagint and I think a lot of it has to do with the West rejecting the East, okay, and being against the East. And the East, you know, it's with Alexandria. And the Greek Septuagint comes from Alexandria, okay? And they and the Greek Septuagint was translated from Hebrew texts originally. So in reality, God's word is the Greek Septuagint, 
without corruption, not the Hebrew Masoretic text, which is used to translate almost every single Protestant Bible you see. Okay, and that should sort of bother you a little bit. Now, there's actually other verses uh, I can give for an example. Uh, here we go. Proverbs 9.10. This is the KJV. The fear of the Lord, or Masoretic text, Hebrew Tanakh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now, let's read the Septuagint version. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the counsel of saints is understanding. For to know the law is the character is the character of a sound mind. Now, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but power and of love and of a sound mind. So it sort of indicates that Timothy was reading Proverbs 9.10 from the Septuagint, not from the, not from the Hebrew Masoretic text. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. James 4, 6. God resisteth, resist, I can't pronounce anything today. God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Proverbs 3, 4, 34. This is where this comes from. In the Septuagint, the Lord resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Here's Proverbs 3, 34 in the KJV. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he gives grace unto the lowly. Now, which one sounds more accurate? Okay, here's more. Here's another one. Matthew 15, 9. KJV. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as their doctrines the precepts of men. Isaiah 29, 13. The Septuagint. Again, these guys in the New Testament were quoting from the Septuagint, which is the accurate one. But in vain do they worship me, teaching the commandments and doctrines of men. Now let's read the Hebrew Masoretic text, which is in all the KJVs, which supposedly Matthew 15, 9 is quoting from. Uh, Isaiah 29, 13, KJV. And the fear of me is a commandment of men, which hath been taught them. Does it even sound rem remotely the same, does it? So instead of talking about them worshiping uh, in vain, it says, and the fear of me is a commandment of men, which has been taught them. It's not even remotely the same. Okay. Revelation 2.26 says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Will those who overcome rule the heathen, or will they hurt and do evil to them? The next verse quotes Psalm 2.9. Revelation 2.27, And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Psalms 2.9, Thou shalt rule them with a rod of iron. Here's the KJV version. Psalms 2.9, and this is the one with the from the Hebrew. Masoretic text, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. So instead of ruling them, he breaks them. And so doesn't it sound like they're just trying to control and take over the world? And isn't that playing into the whole Jewish conspiracy of them trying to take over the world? That's kind of funny. Proverbs 26, 22. And this is the, the Hebrew one. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Now, here's the Septuagint one. The words of cunning knaves, deceitful and tricky person, are soft, but they smite even the innermost parts of the bowels. Okay. So Proverbs 18, 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like bars of a castle. This is the Hebrew one I just read. Here's the Septuagint one. A brother helped by a brother is a strong and high city and is as strong as a well-founded place. So it's actually a positive thing instead of a negative thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I think I made my point.